Doctrine and Devotion is sponsored by Lagos Bible Software. You can get Lagos 8 Basic for free by going to lagos.com slash doc and devo. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion. Is that what we're doing? That's what we're doing today, Joe. Good job. It's a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Man, we're just chilling. Mm, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We're having a cigar. Mm -hmm. It's a good time. Relaxing. And uh, so Jen, uh, for every holiday, Jen decorates the dining room table. Yeah. Every holiday. Um, every major holiday, including some of the minor ones, like St. Patrick's Day. Okay. So she does a full decoration, like streamers, banners, like inflatable leprechaun hats and all kinds of stuff. She made bangers and mash. Mm. Uh, oh. It was good, man. Uh, she made some kind of some Guinness chocolate stout cupcakes. Oh, yeah. that sounds really good. Yeah, I had two of those. You brought me one. Yeah, no, 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 no. I left some for me at home when I got oh. home later. That, that's very yeah. kind no. of you. you and your, aren't you on like some kind of cleanse? I think you and your wife, you're doing some kind of cleanse. That's what I remember. Why are we talking about yeah, this? Yeah, I'm just saying. That's what I thought. Something mm. like that. Not a cleanse, but something. You're doing something, right? No, it's a cleanse. Is it a cleanse? <laughs> okay, you're doing a cleanse. All right. <laughs> they won't, they, or she won't call it a cleanse. It's not. A, she won't say it's a cleanse. What's a cleanse? Oh, no. Uh, she calls it a cleanse. Well, no, they call it a, I don't know, shred. Okay. That you can't call it a shred if you're not like doing crunches and stuff. Oh, no. I, and I am not yeah, doing crunches. Because why would you do that? Why, well, would you, why would anybody do a crunch? It's probably good for you. No, that's the problem. Sa- you and crunching, I are not, crunching, crunching is, sounds terrible. Crunch, it might sound terrible, but I'm sure it actually helps. Only crunching I like is it's in my what? Nestle's Crunch Bar. Oh, yeah. there you go. Mm-hmm. There that's you what go. I do. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm glad we got to finally hang out, man. I mm. missed you while I was gone in Michigan. Yeah, I, 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 I missed you too. Yeah, he said without much thought or no, feeling. I, no, mm. I, exactly. I didn't have yeah. to think you about it. You didn't know I, I was knew. gone, did you? You didn't even know I was gone. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's okay. You were in Dallas? No, no. It's all right. Don't worry. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not hurt by it too much. It's fine. That's you know? fine. I knew yeah. where you were. Uh-huh. I knew you were in Philadelphia. Yeah, I'm not there either. It's called the Philadelphia Conference of Reform Theology, but okay, it's not that, in Philadelphia. Well, that that's that's confusing. Then. Yeah. Okay. You're in Orlando. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's fine. I'm sure. I'm, I forget, Joe. You know, I forget things. It's okay. Yeah. You know what I saw when I was there? Okay. My, my man Josh is a friend that I made there a while ago. In Ohio, uh, Michigan. Okay, I was close. I, it's I was all the circling. same. It's I was all circling. the same. It's all like it's a Ohio, Michigan, Iowa. It's all. So the same. you saw a friend. So all this guy there, a friend I made, uh, met a long time ago, and you know what he did? Mm. He took and I'll, I'll put the pictures up in the show notes. People can see these if I remember, which I probably won't. You probably won't. Uh, good to but hear. he he's like, I got to show you this. So he showed me this black book. It's a hardcover black book, and it looks like one of those old, like cruel, like. Puritan books that's been bound by like Sully Deo Gloria or Sprinkle and uh, and on the back on the spine it says Church Trilogy by Joe Thorne and when you open it up it's all three of my books that Moody produced in one volume. Dude that sounds amazing. It's the it's the size of a real book. It was it's the size of a real book. All three together mm-hmm. one whole book. Well I'm just saying that sounds Pretty amazing. I, pretty cool. I would buy that. I would buy that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, but, you know, I'm pretty much the only one that buys my books anyway. So, you know, that's how that goes. Hey, um, what are we going to talk about today? Today, uh, we're going to be talking about gospel centered churches. Mm, mm. Like, oh, I don't know, like Redeemer Fellowship. That's the place that we're at. Redeemer Fellowships is my jams. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's gonna get old for everybody else, but not, uh, not for, for us. us. No, no, I don't really care. Listen, uh, we say things that are funny to us. We're not really thinking about what's funny. Yeah, about I don't people. really think about other people on that uh, one. So, and uh, so what it's, it's one of the things that I I love about Redeemer. It's one of the things that that drew us uh, when Michelle and I were in Canada and we we're looking to move back. We we're looking at other churches, um, looking online, reading their statement of faith, listening to the sermons. Uh, and one of the things that stuck out to us was the faithfulness to God's word mm. uh, and the gospel being centered yeah. throughout the life of the church. Uh, and that really came actually, uh, that was confirmed, I should say, uh, cause we, we believed it when we're here and we're meeting people and we're having conversations, uh, and we could see the gospel being center. Um, uh, but even the discussion, uh, that we'd have with you, uh, at membership orientation and, and such, the gospel is the center of what Redeemer does. 
And that's, you know, it's, it's, it, we're trying, right? We're trying to maintain that. It's, I don't think anybody ever really arrives, right? There's always, uh, problems. In fact, um, in the 1689 confession, uh, chapter 26 in paragraph three, it says this, the purest churches under heaven are subject to mixture and error. And some have so degenerated as to become no churches of Christ, but synagogues of Satan. Nevertheless, Christ always has had and ever shall have a kingdom in this world to the end thereof of such as believe in him and make profession in his name. So even the best churches, like there's no perfect church. No. Right. No. And so if you're looking for a church and, you know, and that can be a hard search. People get frustrated. They're like, man, I can't find a church that I that I really like. Well, OK, there is there's a good chance that your expectations are a little too high. Right? Yeah. You're looking for a perfect church, which doesn't exist. You have to sort of make a hierarchy of what's most important and what you can live with and what you can live without. Correct. And so uh, when we're going through this, Joe, like uh, you've talked about this quite often uh, about being a gospel centered church. So what is it that we're kind of striving for? Well, I would say that the, the most important thing to start with is to, is to know what the gospel is. I mean, everybody's talking about the gospel these days. It's like every uh, second book that's published. I know everything's about the gospel centered this gospel centered that or even yeah. like gospel driven. Oh, gospel driven. Uh, there's I just saw a book, right? The, the gospel driven church. Uh, another oh, one. here we go again. Here well, we go. You know who I bet wrote that one? Who? Jared Wilson's. Of course. But Jared Wilson's is my jam. <laughs> No, seriously. Jared Wilson's new book, The Gospel Driven Church. We have not read it. We just got it. We each just got a copy. Yep. We're going to read I'm going to be it. be reading at the end of the month uh, when I head down to I'm going to read mine this week. Okay, I'm not I'll reading I'll read it mine. before you. Okay. Um, You'll, you probably will. I'm no, wait I'm, a week. Just, I'm just trying to beat you. Um, we are, Jared, we are super excited to read this book. We have not read it yet. So what we're going to say here is not reflected in this book necessarily. We don't know. Maybe it is. Um, we're going to get into it, though. So we're going to encourage you guys to go ahead and pick it up because everything Jared Wilson writes is worth reading. It's worth buying and reading. We love it's, Jared it's, Wilson stuff. Jared has a way. I, I love, like... I love how pastoral he is. Yeah. Right? Like in the way he writes. Right. It, it's not just about, you know, the, the theological doctrines, but okay, mm-hmm. what does it then mean for your heart and yeah. the life of the church today? What does it mean to, to, how should it then spew forth as we are proclaiming the glory of God? Don't to say those, spew. No, yeah. spew forth. Yeah, no, it's no a, spew forth. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as we seek to glory God and all. Well, I mean, and the thing about Jared is, is, I totally agree, right? The content is good. It gets to experience. It gets, it's practical, but he's also a good writer in, in the way he, I mean, he's, he's, there's a lot of poetic, there's a poetic nature to what he writes. Turn right? a phrase. Yeah. yeah. He, it's basically the opposite of what he looks like, right? Like, so Jared oh, is, you got to explain that. Cause that sounded, like, that sounded no, like Jared is a funny looking guy, right? Jared, Jared looks like a cartoon character and, um, but his writing is super good. His writing is beautiful, and he, he is not a beautiful person uh, externally. That's what I'm, I'm trying to compliment him. That's a compliment, Jared. <laughs> it felt like a, a backhanded compliment. Uh, it, it's a compliment. Yeah, it's a compliment. Yeah. It's like, you know, he's beautiful on the inside, guys. Yeah, and that's thankfully, that's what matters. That, because if it, if it was the opposite, uh, yeah, there wouldn't be much to talk about when it comes to Jared. Uh, so... We have Why to def- do you do these things? Because I'm, because I'm a scorpion. Um, <laughs> it's my nature. So we first have to establish what the gospel is, right? Okay. And so um, we can just say it this way. We say it this way all the time. The gospel is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus that accomplishes redemption and restoration for all who believe and even ultimately in the end for all creation, mm. right? So life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, that's the gospel. And then, of course, what it does is it reconciles sinners to God and brings about a redemption of the whole created order eventually in the end. And that means that the gospel and Jesus himself is our greatest hope and mm-hmm. boast. I mean, right. it's, it, it, it's, our, it's our greatest uh, longing, joy, it's passionate song, it's, it's our message. And that's right. the most important thing, that this is our message that we carry forth mm-hmm. uh, within our church and outside of our church. Right. Like it's, it's that gospel message that actually defines us as Christians. It unites us yeah. as brothers and sisters. It changes us as sinners and saints. And it, and it even sends us out on mission, right? So that's the, the big picture of being gospel centered. Mm. Uh, it's when the gospel is exalted above all the other things in our lives, the, the good things, uh, not just the bad things. And if we're, if we're talking about that in an experiential way, Right. Like, what does the gospel centered life look like? Oh, wait, uh, wait, wait, no, I can't just talk about this theoretically. Uh, yeah. You, well, the abstract, you know, you can, you can, but it's what's important is that you actually experience a gospel centrality, you know, the work of, of, of the grace of God in your heart. Oh. And so I, there's, there's a few things that we've kind of outlined here as, as we think about a gospel centered life. And one of them is uh, confidence. 
right? So when when Christ is at the center, when the gospel is truly the most important uh, reality or truth in in your life, then we have a confidence before God that's mm. not based on our achievements, on our heritage. It's not even based on our theological precision, but it's based on Christ and on his atonement, right? It means like I have confidence to approach God knowing that he's going to receive me because he has chosen me, Christ has died for me, the Spirit has regenerated me, and the Father has adopted me as one of his children. And I love that. I love that confidence that we have as, as a child of God to go before our Father, right? Like there's this there's this trust, there's this safety there, mm-hmm. right? Uh, like as, as a child goes to their Father, uh, they, they know they're going to be received mm-hmm. warmly. And this is one of the ways you know if you are leaning into gospel centrality or leaning away from it. Right. Do you allow your sins to anchor you to guilt and despair? Mm. Because if you do, then you're not leaning into gospel centrality. Right. Um, the, the reality of sin in your life should compel you to run to Jesus again and again for the grace that restores. Right. For the, yeah, for, so you're still confessing and repenting. Right. All right? the time. Yeah. But instead of it just anchoring you to guilt, your sins, if you're gospel centered, will make you run to Jesus. So confidence, I think, is, is one of the big ones. Uh, uh, another big one is is. Uh, intimacy, right? When the gospel is central in our lives, we have and maintain intimacy with God. And it's not because of our religious performance. That's something that you do or say. It's not the show, right? but it's because of Jesus's priestly ministry, his high priestly prayer, where, where we will not leave his grasp. Yeah. We know that Jesus is our mediator, that he is interceding on our behalf right now yeah. uh, with God, the father, and that he has made the perfect peace for us through his sacrifice, which allows us to draw near to God with that eager expectation of receiving his grace yeah. and not judgment. Right. Intimacy, you talk about this a lot, but you, you, you talk about communion, right? Communion oh, yeah. with yeah. God. Yeah. And what's the book you always talk about? Uh, uh, well, communion with God. <laughs> <laughs> Real original, Real, Owen. Yeah, thank you, John. The, Jonathan Owens is my jam. And so, yeah, he talks about it's going to ebb and flow, right? Mm-hmm. Our communion with God ebbs and flow, but not our union with God. Our right. justification with God is is secure, and that's that conf- confidence that Joe's talking about. Our, our justification is secure, uh, but our communion with God may ebb and flow, and it's not God that moves it, but it's us. Right, and it's the gospel that gives us the 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 confidence to pursue that communion right mm. and we can also talk about if you're if you're leaning into gospel centrality in your life then you will experience transformation so there when should we be a change yeah there should be a change 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 <laughs> change, change 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 of fools <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're not here we're not just talking about moral improvement uh, you don't you don't need the gospel to 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 get sober People get sober all the time without yeah. the gospel. So yeah, if praise pe- God. <laughs> right. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. And we're not making light of that. But if people can get sober or get off of porn or stop gossiping or start being better husbands without the Holy Spirit, without the gospel, then how much more should we be able to experience a legitimate transformation that starts on the inside? That is an internal change that pr- produces this this external difference. Um, it's not just willpower. Right? Yeah. It's the power of the resurrection. So our hope for becoming what God has designed us to be what he desires us to be is is not accomplished merely by trying harder but by trusting god more and in that faith uh pursuing god through the means of grace and in that we begin to be actually changed uh, another aspect of uh, gospel centered life is are you part of community Always Jimmy with the community. Yeah, yeah. Because Always Jimmy with the community. I, I need you. So, yeah, you know, you need everybody. I, well, yeah. Yes, I need you. I one. Well, I need Pastor Pat. I need Pastor Brian. I I need Greg Earl. I need handsome uh, Greg. From time to time, I he's need a him. handsome guy. I saw him today walking in. Even even when he's dressed down, you know, he's a lawyer. He's Esquire. He's usually looking real nice. Today he walked in in his like civvies, still handsome. You know, Colson. You know, <laughs> Colson Hauser, you don't want to say anything how good Colson is because he does listen to the podcast. His wife is awesome. And Colson is? Colson is his is her husband. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Colson. I'm teasing. <laughs> but I, I need community and you should uh, be striving. Like you should desire and, and want to be with community. When, right. when the gospel is centered in our lives, we long for and discover unity with our believers, uh, with other believers in the local church. And it's not because of any cultural commonality right but because of our common faith and our savior right, right? like in, in all seriousness what do you and um well you and i have a lot in common uh 
like like you and Greg, right, are are pretty different people, I think. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Right. But you guys have a legit tight bond, tight friendship, yeah. like real communion there. Yeah. Why? And it, well, because of our faith yeah. in Christ, because of the salvation that we have uh, in Christ. OK, so. So these are some of the things that will be true of a of an individual with, if they're leaning into gospel centrality. Mm-hmm. So if we start to talk about a gospel centered church, yeah. what, we're, what we're talking about is 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 a church then the same principles, right? It's a church that is about Jesus before it is about everything else. Yeah, it sounds I know it sounds obvious, um, but what what we really need to do is is clarify the difference between. A gospel-centered church, and I think it's helpful to do this. I try to do this with people quite a bit to, to clarify the difference between a gospel-centered church and, and an issue-driven church. Mm. But before we get into that, we got to talk about the difference between people who are just sort of eking out a meager existence mm. a, a, with the with their Bible study, and those who have a logos-centric experience <laughs> of their study of God's word. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and the best way to go about that is to get Logos Eight Basic for free. It was, if, if you're not ready to pull the trigger and buy Logos Eight Platinum Reformed, mm-hmm. right, which is great, like that's which I, is what Joe and I, yeah, have, that's yeah. what we do. Um, you can start for free, we, and you all you got to do is head on over to Logos.com/slash/doc/and/devo. Joe, I mean, one of the things I I love about Logos Eight uh, and just the Logos program is how fast it is. Yeah. Once they made that upgrade. It got fast, man. It, it was faster than it was before. It, it was always good. It was always great. But man, yeah. In fact, now sometimes before my fingers hit the keyboard, I'm thinking like, oh, I want to I want to research this passage. But before I get to it, it just pops up. That's how fast it is. Yeah, that's called an oversell, Joe. What, what do you mean? What's that? Yeah, yeah don't, you're, 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 you are overselling and it's going to under deliver. Don't how, do that. How, how am I doing that? Because you know that's not true. Oh, it's oh. <laughs> I don't remember. I can't remember if it happens that way or not. But it's, what, it's what's one of the fast. things that you love about Logos, right? I love how fast it is. I love the searching. I love how uh, you could go to the advanced search. You could you could look at a topic and you, it'll pull all the resources yeah. from or all the times that that topic is referenced yeah. in all your resources. All right, one of my favorite things is cited by. Cited okay. by. You do cited by. And so what I'm able to do is I use cited by and then I put in, say, oh, I don't know, Sabbath or um, uh, Union, right? Something like that. And I can use Cited By to search only the works of John Bunyan. Yeah. yeah that's, that's pretty, pretty good. Cool. Yeah. So I know it, it, it's, it's been great for our sermon prep. It's been good uh, and fantastic for my personal devotions. For those of you in school, I found it really useful uh, when I was finishing up my degree uh, to have Logos. What was your degree in? Uh, biblical Studies mm. and... A second one in theological studies. Okay, so if you didn't have Lagos, you might have just washed out. You might have flunked right out of that program. But you had Lagos, summa cum laude. <laughs> oh, no, no, that that, that summa that, cum laude. No, that did not happen. That did not happen. <laughs> 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 that did not happen. But uh, no, I found it really really useful as I'm writing on papers. Uh, I was able to to you know look at topics and and phrases right. uh, from all these different resources or writers or theologians and be able to put them all together mm-hmm. and start to to research and yeah. and cite uh, for my and papers. I found it really, it's really not, helpful. It's, it, some of you might think or you might feel it's kind of like cheating. I might feel like I'm cheating. You're not cheating because you would have to do the same thing in the library, right? You would have to have all of the, all of these books out. You'd have like 20 books out. You're yeah, writing down all the sources and you know, it's like, that's how I had to do it when I was in college. Um, but now you can do that same research with Lagos and it's that much, it saves you time so that you can go and hang out with your friends yeah. instead of spending all night studying. You know, you, you, you spend uh, the same amount of time studying, but in terms of the research and all that, so much quicker, boom, you got time to go and hang out with your, with the friends. I know what Michelle loves. Uh, Michelle loves the daily devotionals, right? It, it has a reminder that reminds you and it, you know, goes up on your phone. Uh, hey, Charles Stanley. Little Charles does, Stanley she devotional. Does, she does not do Charles Stanley. Oh no, uh, uh, but you know, Warren like, Wiersbe, little the like, B series. Like B, B series. <laughs> I don't know. There's some good stuff in there. You know? she, she doesn't use that. No, no. Okay. But I'm just talking about like the, the reminders, uh, yeah. and it keep it, it picks up right where she left off in scripture yeah. on her. Uh, well, we got so much more. We, we'll talk more about it next time we do the promo. We'll talk some more about the stuff that they do. There's so much good stuff on Lagos. Yeah, love it. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you Shrek for offering this to our listeners. You can head on over to Lagos.com/slash/doc and Devo. All right, so. 
to help us understand the gospel-centered church, uh, we're going to encourage you in advance, read uh, Jared Wilson's book, The Gospel Driven yeah, Church. Even though we haven't read it, we... It's going to be good. I mean, yeah, I got, we're going okay, to read I got all so, the confidence. If, hey, listen, that. if we're wrong, we'll come back and we'll blast it. We oh, will tear it apart. Oh, yeah. Jared, you better yeah. hope it's good. It better be, better not be like you look. Okay, that's what we're saying. Why do um, you do these what things? What I'm just saying. He's just, a friend. I'm try, I'm, Why do you I know, do that? exactly. Why do you do that? Exactly. Why are you making fun hey, of Hey, be sure books? and come to the Normal Pastors Conference this year. I'll be speaking there with Jared Wilson. There you go. See, now yep. you finally did something nice instead so of now, calling him. Now, now when, when I'm up there with Jared, look at me and then look at him. <laughs> then look at me and then look at him. You're both the same. Look, no, no, no. You're uh, both the same. No, no, no. You're Matt. both the same. I, he just has more holiness. Oh, yeah. He's got more holiness, yeah. but he's got less faceliness. That's what he's got less <laughs> of. All right. So. But one of the ways that um, I, I try to talk about it with people is I, I really believe that most churches tend to be issue driven rather than gospel centered. And an issue driven church um, yeah, is define that. OK, so it's, it doesn't I don't mean it's a liberal church versus a conservative church. An issue driven church is not an Arminian church and making a Calvinist church a gospel centered church. You can be Calvinist, Reformed, Arminian, Wesleyan. You can be liberal, conservative and be issue driven. Right. So what I mean by that is an, an issue driven church is a church where. A, a secondary issue has become the primary thing that they are known about. So, for example, yeah, what's an example? Some of that? churches are driven by doctrinal precision and purity, right? Now, typically, this is in the Reformed tradition, right? And so, in their pursuit of the truth, um, it, it's not uncommon for that kind of a church to be more about their theological heritage than they are about the founder and the perfecter of their faith. Hmm. Um, some churches are, are driven by numbers, right? And again, uh, numbers aren't a bad thing. They want to reach people. They want yeah. to reach as many they wanna, people they as they can. They want to see people come to the Lord. Yeah. Right? So that's a good thing. And so because they desire to see as many people as possible trust Christ, that sometimes leads into a form of pragmatism uh, where they um, are willing to make concessions in what they do or how they do things that aren't entirely biblical. Uh, some churches are driven by a desire to be culturally relevant. Like they want, like, we're just like you, man. We're, we're just like the world. And they lose the fact that we are supposed to be distinct and separate in many ways. And then other churches, of course, are so focused on how different they are and how separate they are from the world that they have no meaningful interaction with mm. the world outside of a very, you know, brief and direct gospel presentation. Yeah. Uh, other churches are driven by um, works of mercy and uh, and those are good. Those are important. Um, but they oftentimes will get so focused on that that they forget that we are really primarily called to champion the gospel. Now, the gospel center church is, is doesn't forsake all of those things. No, no. But they have Jesus as like number one, like the main thing. Yeah, they're driven by a love for Jesus and his work on our behalf. Right. And so therefore, you know, gospel center churches are so focused on Jesus and the hope of redemption that they are passionate and articulate about their theology. Oh, so that theology is important. Yeah. Right. It's even more important because it helps us to know Jesus better. Yeah. Their desire to know and make known Jesus demands doctrinal precision mm -hmm. and leads them to want and work toward as many people as possible, repenting of sin and trusting in Christ. So yeah, we, you will care about people. Like the, you want to reach as many. That's right. I mean, possible. you're driven. Uh, the gospel centered church is driven by love for God and for others, and this leads to that joyful obedience that points back to God. Yeah, totally. You know, I think that. Um, I, I think it's important for us to say, you know, like I, I don't commonly say Redeemer is a gospel centered church as if we've arrived. Um, we strive to be a gospel. So yeah. we want to be a gospel centered yeah. church and we need to be constantly aware and evaluating ourselves. Like, you know, where are we likely to slip? Right. Mm. And, um, and so I, I, I want to be encouraging to, um, to our people and to everybody listening that your church will have a mixture of, of, of error and, and truth in it, right? There's going to be good practices and bad in every church, good pa yeah. practices and bad practices. So what you want to do is you want to begin to lean in to gospel centrality. You can do that as an individual, of course, and for the church to do it, it really will require, um, I think, the, the leadership to have some clarity on this issue, to identify where they are likely to struggle with I uh, an, ide uh, an issue-driven yeah. identity. Um, but then it will also take the congregation as well. The, mm. congregation, the congregation and the leadership together have to begin to value and desire Christ above all things if this is going to be a reality. But we definitely want to say, read the Gospel Driven Church by Wilson. He didn't ask us to do this. Uh, we're not, uh, we're not, you know, paid to promote Jared Wilson's book, but 
we know we're confident that this is going to be a really helpful book for you guys to read. And we wanted to get you uh, in on it on the front end, even before we get to it, because um, we don't want you to miss out. We want you to get this now while you can, and then you can join the conversation, right? Yeah, you can uh, follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctor and Devotion. You can head to the website, DrDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. You know what, though? What? Maybe you're thinking about grabbing some gear. Maybe mm. you're thinking about getting that Sip It, Don't Dip It t-shirt, right? Yep. Classic. Mm. Beautiful. Maybe, maybe while you're there, you go to DrDevotion.com slash conference. And just go ahead and register for the conference. You know you're going to go. You might yeah. as well go. Hey, listen, here's the thing. You're thinking of buying the t-shirt? Skip buying the t-shirt right now. Register for the conference. You get a free t-shirt. You get a t-shirt as a part of your conference registration, plus books from Banner of Truth, Crossway, and others. Uh, you're going to get a custom journal. Oh, yeah. You're, you're gonna, it, it, And you're going to get to hear Dougie Logan's. Dougie Logan. You're going to get to hear James Hamilton's. James the Hamilton's. Jimmy Fowler's. The Fowler's. Joe Thorne's. Thorne's. And a bunch of breakout speakers that are better than us. It's going to be amazing. Man. Can't wait to see it. May 3rd and 4th. Yep. DrDevotion.com slash conference. Fresh pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog posts on Wednesdays. Video content on Fridays. Later. Later.